Okay, good evening, everyone. Good planning board members and the public and applicants. Uh, I'd like to call the Monday, November 15th, 2021 meeting of the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board to order. Um, let's see, the first order of business is the confirmation or modification of the posted meeting agenda. Um, we'll get into some deferrals here, but I don't believe the agenda changes. My Jim and Gretchen? Nope. Nope. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe everybody's received Jim's meeting notes. Um, unless you have any comments or questions, could I have a motion to approve them as uh, submitted? So moved, Edna. Motion, Edna, second. Second, Kathy. Second, Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? The motion carries. Thank you. I believe everyone has received the draft uh, November 1st minutes. Have you all had a chance to review them? Yes. Uh, any uh, additions, corrections, amendments? Hearing none, could I have a motion to accept them as submitted? So much, so much so. Uh, motion, Sean, second, Edna. Second, Joe. Second, third, Joe. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Nothing. Um, I have no correspondence uh, or announcements. Jim, anybody else? Anything you want to bring before the board? Uh, I don't have any, Melody. Okay. Anyone from the board? Okay. Um, so because we don't have a time, are we okay to proceed with new applications at this point? Yes, meeting started at 6.30, uh, so okay. we are ready to go ahead. All right, so uh, this evening we have on our agenda two new applications. The first is Dr. Paul and Helena Pye, tap in place. It's for a minor subdivision, three lots into two lots. Who is here representing the applicant? Well, um, <clears throat> she may be thinking that we start a little later, but um, I'll just move ahead to report that the next one under new applications is Eli Goldstein, 15 Old Farm Road, site plan review and special use permit for the conversion of a second floor of a garage into a studio guest suite. I can report that Mr. Goldstein was not able to prepare and submit all the information needed for us to review this as a new application. And so they will not be present or presenting any new information for us regarding this application tonight. Um, tentatively, Gretchen has spoken to them about um, coming in as a new application on the December, what date, Gretchen? Six. Um, so assuming, because this is a new application, that all their information is in three weeks in advance of December 6th, we will place them on that agenda. If they don't meet the deadline of three weeks before, it will be, uh, they will come back to us and look for another date. Is that correct, Gretchen? Well, he's already submitted a complete application, but it's the additional copies that he needs to turn in. My understanding was we didn't have all the fees. We The fees and the additional copies are asked for after it's reviewed by the ZA and said to be complete to move forward. But essentially we don't have everything. Right. So we'll wait until we have everything before we finally confirm the appearance on December 6th. Um, anything from Marie? I don't believe so. <clears throat> um, I, I can fill a couple minutes if you want, Melody. Um, just with a oh, quick I'd love it. Go ahead. <laughs> thought on something, and then you know I can provide at least a quick overview of the pie application. Um, not particularly. All right. Why don't we do that? Um, so why don't I start with just um, a quick thought or, or thought I'll put out there for the board since we have a couple minutes. 
Um, one item that has come up recent in recent discussion um, that I started doing last year, I think you're all here for it, uh, is an end of the year um, wrap up of everything that happened uh, with the planning board uh, to pro provide you with a kind of a reminder of just how much work you've done. Um, and then I provide it uh, as a presentation to the town board as well to let them know what, what was going on. Um, so we do have a lot that happened this year. Um, I'll be working with HAPAC as well to talk about all the referrals we did and all of the uh, HAPAC related work that was done with the planning board uh, this year and individually. Um, but I guess since we have just a minute or two, uh, I thought I'd just ask if anyone has any thoughts based on the one I did last year, um, if you have any thoughts or ideas of something you'd like to see uh, in the, you know, in the end of the year report. Um, it probably won't be until, I don't know, probably February or March meeting. I'll have to wait till the end of the year and then pull all the information together. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on it or, you know, based on what we did last year? Would you like to see the one I did last year again to take a look at it before I put up, pull together a new one? Any thoughts like that? It's a dense body of work, I have to say. So thank you, Jim, for doing it, number one. Number two, thank you for agreeing to do the same thing for the Preservation Committee. And I, for one, would like to see the file from last year just to refresh my memory. Thank you. <laughs> I think it would be interesting to present it at a joint meeting of the planning board and town board to see what kind of questions they might have for us. Okay, I, I can certainly bring that up as an idea. To do that, we'd have to schedule a special meeting, not a big deal, it's just another meeting we'd have to schedule. Um, but I can certainly bring that to the town board for their consideration. Well, Jim's um, working magic behind the Wizard of Oz screen there. Um, the other thing that I will bring up that's come up in conversation, um, we were wondering uh, how many members of the planning board would be interested in re how many have or have access to or are comfortable with the online version of the zoning code. Right. Uh, Jim had brought that up and um, offered to work to secure copies of the code if there were members of the planning board, especially new members who didn't have it in hard copy and wished it. So are any of you um, interested in that? Or are you all comfortable referencing the applications with online versions. You're referencing the the like the master all the zoning codes. The yeah the three inch thick gosh knows what. I mean, uh, I'm zoning zoning code wetlands subdivision the you know the map um, copies of other relevant documents the historic sites things like that I'd, I'd pull all that together for and yes Melody's right it's a three inch binder. I that's one thing I think I'd like um, physical. I'd like to have a hard copy of it. Hard copy? Yeah. I use the online version all the time, but I would very much like a hard copy. I will take a hard copy also. Jim, I'd like a hard copy with any notes that you could provide on the appropriate pages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take oh, one too. Oh, I don't excellent. want to be like that. Excellent. Uh, Sean, you want the excellent. Cliff Notes version? Yeah, the yeah, Cliff okay. Notes version. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can have mine, but M Michael's has probably got better notes in it than mine. This is only three years worth of uh, edits and ripped pages. All right. So I, I see the, that the demeanor of the board is to, um, no, I, I will tell you that having hard copy makes a great deal of difference. And um, so we're going to take it up. Uh, we're going to check and see whether our budget allows for that or how we figure it out. But now that we know you're all interested in that, we'll pursue that and attempt to have that ready for the beginning of the year. Yep. Um, we'll get it done one way or another. It is a very useful, very useful document and something you'll want to keep on your bedside for sure. <laughs> Jim, are you okay? Or um... Well, we're at 640. I still don't see anyone here uh, for the PI application. I can give you my, you know, my quick comments on it. It's probably only going to take two minutes. Um, it'll get us that much closer, I guess, to 6:45. Okay. We we'll start the public hearings. Um, so obviously, just as a disclaimer, I'm not the applicant. Um, but I will just explain really quickly what is going on here. Um, so up on the screen, um, what you see in front of you is is the proposal to essentially consolidate three lots on tap and place uh, into two. So you, you have a lot. Um, let's see, I think the existing line is here. 
Uh, so you have, you have one lot here, you have another lot kind of here, and then you have a third lot over here. And the idea um, that they would, what the applicant would like to do is actually take those three and create two lots off the end of the cul-de-sac. So this dark black line would actually essentially split, kind of split the properties in half um, to consolidate them down. So uh, what we're looking at is a, is a lot line adjustment uh, to reduce the existing three into two. The applicant did attend a pre-conference meeting on July 6th. Uh, we didn't identify any significant issues then. Um, you know, in, in our opinion, this proposal is effectively reducing a non-conformity um, by increasing the, the size of the two lots. I uh, don't really see any, any significant issues with it as proposed. I can um, take any questions if you have them, but again, I'm not the applicant, so. Are there, are there existing buildings on the lots? Yes, uh, lot two here has in green, I can zoom in, has an existing house on it right here. So this is their driveway coming up from tap in place. And then there's a, a large house up here on the hill. Just, just for my knowledge, what's what would be the issues with consolidating lots versus dividing lots in a subdivision? Um, Why would we be concerned about turning three into two? There aren't necessarily any concerns. Um, you know, again, it's they're non-conforming. Uh, they're in the RC five, and they're not five acre lots. Uh, they still won't be five acres. So we are, gotcha. we are decreasing the non, the non-conformity of that use, um, getting it closer to what it, it, it's supposed to be under the current zoning. Um, generally you just want to look at it and see that it makes sense. I think for the most part, um, and okay. that, you know, it's, it's not creating an issue by, by doing this, that the lot line isn't say proposed to run somewhere that doesn't make sense. Um, that, you know, it's going to create some issue in the future. Um, where if they went to sell this off, you might see an issue, you know, with that lot or with something related to the neighbors, couldn't get access to it. Wouldn't want to have a lot line adjustment that created a lot that didn't have access to a road that would then create an issue in the future where they'd have to get some kind of easement, something like that. Um, but I don't really Tim, see Tim, anything. would we need to get an opinion from Winnicky? I see they're an adjacent property owner. They are adjacent. Um, I don't believe there's anything on these properties themselves that are Winnicky. I don't know... Okay what the history has been, I don't know, Melody or Michael with, with the property adjacent to Winnicky. I mean, there's a 50 foot setback. Um, so they obviously won't be able to work right up to the property line, but I don't know, have we, have we provided a, a, a um, referral, Michael or Melody to Winnicky in the past for an adjacent? Well, I, think my knowledge, only, no. I think you would only refer, refer it as you would to any adjacent property owner. Right, with the, with the notification, the mailing. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and, th and that would be done because they're right, obviously right there. Okay. Um, and this, these, the parcel here, this one over here is, is pretty much all wooded. There's nothing on this site. And there's no suggestion that they want that for development? They're not proposing it, but again, I'm, you'd have to ask the applicant. Obviously, they, they put the setbacks on, but you know, that's all the information okay. we have to go on for tonight. Okay. Well. Oh, oh, Marie's here. There we go. Well, all I right. might have, I, I had to scroll up, so she may have been there for a minute. That would be my mistake. All right, so we'll give her two minutes. No, we'll give her. It was my participant list that scrolled down. It looks like you have my plan on the table. I apologize for being late. We were this just, uh, we were just, hi, Marie. Nice to see you or nice to hear you. Thank uh, you. Jim gave us a general overview um okay at all points reminding us that he is not the applicant um but well here i am i was having computer issues not that i wasn't here on time but i just couldn't get logged in right away okay so, well um we'll we'll turn it over to you to make your um make your explanation thank you and i apologize if i repeat what jim has already said but um what you have here is a uh, Mr. Pye, Dr. Pye and his wife are the owners of several lots at the end of Tappan Place off of Kerr Road in the town. And um, just so you know where it's located, it's the, the property due north of this property is owned by Winnicky Land Trust. It's Burger Hill Park. Dr. Pye and his wife have um, two vacant lots, one of which fronts on Kerr Road and the other of fronts on Tappan Place. He would like to subdivide the Tappan Place parcel and put some of that property with his existing house lot and take the remainder of that and put it with the Kerr Road property. The main reasons are number one is to make both of them somewhat larger. So you're taking two 
non-conforming lots, making them both larger and removing totally a non-conforming lot that currently exists. Um, but the frontage from Kerr Road is very steep and it will be difficult to put a driveway in. So his plan is to bring another driveway in off the cul-de-sac at the end of Tappan Place to access the land that would become the combined lot of Kerr Road, lot 3B and parcel one or parcel two, I can't even read my own writing. Um, yeah, three. Jim, can you, can you, yeah, thank you, Jim. Yeah, I was just gonna, I can look at it here. So, and the other, as you can see, he's already using some of the lot. He has his garden um, on the lot 3A. Plus he has some sculptures, some uh, different things that he's using. I mean, it was his land so he could use it, but this way he'll keep the land that he's already using and make parcel two and lot three be combined a more viable lot really. Okay. Jim, um, is there anything you'd like to add? Oh, well, Marie missed it, but no, I, I really don't have any um, main issues. <clears throat> As I said, I think it, um, it's reducing to uh, non-conforming non lots, uh, reducing the non-conformity of the non-conforming lots. Um, don't really see any issues. Questions from the planning board? Okay. Uh, Jim, I think we've got a draft procedural resolution. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, we do. And, and all resolutions were posted online on Friday. <clears throat> all right. So I'm not going to go through and read it line by line. We're accepting it. We're classifying it. Uh, scheduling a public hearing, Gretchen. December 20th, 645. Um, delegating planning board members who would like to make this site visit. I'll go. Was that you, Delise? Yes, yeah. Okay, and with Delise? I can also go. Sean? Yes. Okay, um, designating, delegating Delise and Sean to conduct a uh, visit. Anything else? I don't think there's anything else. Could I have a motion to accept the draft procedural resolution? So moved, Edna. Motion second. second. Joe. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions? None. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. We're glad you're here. Thank you. And I apologize again. My computer didn't want to cooperate. Well, you um, talk to that computer. <laughs> no, I'm going to get a bigger hammer. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, all right. So I will contact Gretchen to get in touch with the planning board members arranging a site visit. Yep, Gretchen usually immediately after the meeting or very shortly thereafter sends us out a reminder um, okay. who's doing what site visit. So um, I don't know who's going to take the lead here, but someone, you know, you'll communicate and have the site visit. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. I think we can move now into the public hearing part of the meeting this evening. Uh, the first one is Catherine Whitman, 16 Old Post Road. Site plan review, proposed single family dwelling. Um, are we here? Ready to go? Ella, I don't believe there's anyone here to talk about this one. I don't see Catherine in the, way, in the, um, in the meeting. Okay, Jim, do you wanna update us? Sure, so, um, the project, I guess, kind of stands in the same place it was last month, as far as I know, um, that we were still waiting on additional information from, um, from the applicant, from Catherine, uh, regarding the site. Uh, that was, you know, confirmation from the County Health Department about the uh, proposal for the septic system and answering two questions uh, that were actually raised by her engineer um, that were very good points um, that, you know, she had to delineate the New York State DEC uh, wetland boundaries, uh, and also have a topographic survey conducted to verify the site elevations relative to the base flood elevation to make sure we weren't, uh, she wasn't doing anything within the base flood elevation. Um, she did have wetland delineation done on the site, but that delineation from the information that I got uh, actually ended at her um, property line. And unfortunately, the DEC wetland is off of her property on the next property over. 
So in my opinion, the delineation was not adequately done um, because it didn't go far enough in the the distance from where she's proposing to do work to um, the end of her property line isn't anywhere near 100 feet. So it didn't it didn't clear the buffer area uh, at a minimum that we would require um, for that evaluation. So I, I believe we still need a, a wetland buffer um, delineation to be done, which will require the, the delineator to go on to the adjacent property and get that taken care of. And then the other two items um, that I mentioned. Um, I did actually contact Catherine last week to ask her if there was an update and didn't hear anything back. So as far as I know, uh, that's where we stand right now. We're still waiting for additional information. Okay. Um, any comments from the planning board? Okay, I mean, I, I thought I heard someone speaking, but is there anyone from the planning board that wishes to comment? Okay, um, this is, we've taken a few months on this. We have a couple of options. Um, we can continue it to a specific date or we can continue the public hearing to a date to be determined. Uh, are there any opinions that people would like to offer on which way we would like to go? Jim, is it worth maybe following up with her and, and putting a, a deadline to her to get back to us? to help future planning, I guess? We can't really put a deadline on an applicant unless we close the public hearing, in which case then yeah, we more have- of just, then, I think just we more have making her responsible to get back to us in time. I, I mean, I emailed, I emailed and asked for information, didn't get a response. But really, that's about all I think we can do at this point with an open public hearing. Um, uh, if it's a to be determined public hearing, then what is the process of getting her back on the schedule? Just to re notice. Yes, Just re notice. I remember when we were there, um, and this wasn't related to the wetlands buffer, but her referencing that the setbacks on the property, um, you know, basically were 100 feet versus, but that would be physically impossible based on how narrow the property was. So is that part of just what we're running into? Or is it as the wetland buffer? It's completely separate from from that. The, wet, the wetland buffer is related both to making sure that what she's proposing to do for the building is outside of the buffer, but in specifically re, specifically related to what our engineer said, it's making sure that the proposed septic is outside that hundred foot uh, area. That that the New York State DEC doesn't allow them to be, I believe, doesn't allow them at all to be within that hundred foot buffer. So not only is it an issue for us with our code to make sure we're outside the hundred foot buffer or addressing it if it's within, but making sure that they're, she's meeting the state DEC requirements. Um, so, yeah, I, oh, and, and then in terms of the, the setbacks and things, she did go to the, um, the ZBA and got, uh, Z, I think she got ZBA approval, right, for... Um, yes. I, I'm pretty sure she got the ZBA, for, that would have dealt yeah. with the setback right. issues. Get, right. So get, really it's the wetland issues that are, the remaining problems in front of us. Yeah, the variance was for front yard, both side yards and the rear yard. Wasn't there also an issue of the flood elevation? Yes. Yes, that's another piece of information we're missing. It's pretty much all related to the, the water on site or adjacent. Uh, and then obviously county health department approval for septic. Which we to date still have not received, is that correct? As far as I know, yes, we have not received that. Gretchen, you know, so have you seen anything from the health department? No. Okay. Um, Gretchen, what does the second December meeting look like in terms of um, applications? Um, anything from today will go on the 20th. Be continued. As for new ones, I don't know yet. I usually only slot for four of them, though. So... It looks like we only have one public hearing, which would be Pi right now on there. And actually, no, I think we continued. Well, you have Pi. Daniels and Lions, we continued, I believe, to then as well. And you also are likely to see, oh, okay, okay, the second one in December. So that would give us four public hearings for that night, which is what I usually try to keep it at, if possible. Okay, folks. Um, 
We can continue it to the second meeting in December, or we can continue it to a date to be determined. I'm disappointed that Catherine isn't here tonight to represent her position. Um, my inclination is to continue it to a date to be determined. I agree. I mean, we don't even know that she's going to be around if we continued it to the next meeting. So we don't. We do, I, we don't. And and we have been. I think you know. Um, we have been supportive of her need to provide additional information for a number of months now. And, you know, we just don't seem to be able to get it. So uh, my, that would be my recommendation. And I would entertain that motion if someone's willing to make it. I would make that motion. Thank Second. you. Ken. Is there anyone that disagrees? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we're going to continue Catherine Whitman to a date to be determined. And I assume Gretchen, you'll confirm that information with her? Yes. Okay. Melody, before yep. we move on, just because it is a public hearing, we just want to see if there's anyone on the call who does have anything to, to say or a comment about this project. Well, thanks. Thanks for reminding me of that. Um, we now know that it'll be continued, but just in case there's anyone that wants to comment on it. Okay, is there anyone here from the public? All right, thanks, Jim. It's a good reminder for me. Appreciate it. Yep, no problem. Okay, so let's move on to the second public hearing this evening, Josh Aronson, 26 Morton Road, uh, site plan review and special use permit to construct a studio caretaker apartment. Um, good evening, whoever's here. Josh, you're muted. Good evening. Hi, Josh. Hi. I think my, my architect, Peter Sweeney, is calling in. He's at was at a dinner, and I texted him that we're about to start, so he should be with us shortly, but we don't have to wait. I'm, he'll be with us when he comes in. I think he may have just logged in. Is that PSA Studios? Yeah, that's it. Yep. So let me see. He's muted as well. Oh, Peter, if you could unmute, you're like, there we go. Yep. Hello. Hey, Peter. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I'm uh, calling in from out of town. Isn't that the beauty of virtual meetings? Right. We're all, used to, we're all used to it now. We can hear you, Peter. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. I just 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 patching in right now. It's Peter Sweeney from PSA Studios. All right. So Peter, if um, you're ready, or if Josh is ready, would one of you proceed to give us the overview of the application? Um. Peter, why don't, why don't you do it as a uh, from a more technical perspective or whatever is necessary, or I can. Do you mind giving the general, and then uh, I can fill in any technical? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, essentially, essentially um, we're uh, on a bluff over uh, on Twenty Six Morton Road, and have been here fifteen years, and we're putting in. Uh, both my wife and I have started. Uh, doing uh, art projects and whatnot, and we need a caretaker's unit. So we combined uh, the need for the caretaker slash caregiver unit. Um, uh, we have some health issues in our family, unfortunately. And um, there's a spot and we're, we're 112 feet, which is the appropriate setback from our lot line. And it's, uh, we've nestled a, a little building, um, 1800, 2000 foot building in the woods. Uh, and on the ground floor will be two studios, um, a clay studio for myself and a painting studio for my wife. And there's a stairway outside that goes up to a, uh, a caretaker's apartment above. Um, and it's a pretty simple building and it's nestled nicely in the woods and uh, shouldn't have much impact on anybody. Okay. Um, I believe a site visit was conducted. Uh, yes. Who's prepared to comment on that? John and I did the visit. Did the visit. Um, from viewing it, it's a 
beautifully located on the property. It's very well screened from the neighbors, from the river. You're not gonna see it from the road. It's probably in the best spot on the property it could be placed. Um, it, I think, will integrate well into the property itself into the overall uh, site plan. So uh, I, frankly, I didn't see any problems with it whatsoever. And who else made the site? Uh, myself, Melody. Uh, the only thing I would, I, the only thing I would add is, you know, there's not many other places on the property you can put an additional building that has the flat land. It is really nicely nestled into the woods, which would limit. Um, just it's kind of tucked away nicely overall. So I think it was, it was well thought out and planned. Okay, Jim, is there anything you wanna to bring to our attention? Um, nope, Melody, I, I addressed kind of all my questions uh, last month. Um, the main one was just making sure we were well beyond the wetland area, uh, which we are here, so there are no issues there. Um, otherwise, I think everything seems to be good with me. Are other members of the planning board? Questions, comments? Any Board of Health issues? Who, who can answer that? Well, we have uh, approval. Uh, the, Peter, do you want to take that? We have approval for the yeah. septic. Yeah, the original septic plan was for uh, a five bedroom house plus a caretaker's apartment. Uh, the existing house is four bedrooms uh, and this uh, the caretaker's apartment was never built. So. Uh, we already have approval for the septic. Okay. We're good on that, Jim? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Anyone else from the planning board? All right. Are we ready to close the public hearing? Good move that we do that. Thank you, Edna. Second. 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 Mm, second, whoever. Um, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Jim, do you want to put up the draft uh, approval resolution? Here we go. And again, um, as everyone knows, these are being um, put up online. So they're all in front of people in advance, uh, saving us the time of, and the energy of having to read through them. So we affirm the action, um, finds the proposed work and intended use to be consistent, um, finds the proposed work intended to be, again, consistent, authorizes the planning board to stamp you see it all there. So could I have a motion to accept the draft approval resolution? So moved. Second, Michael, or Edna. I'm, catch, I'm allowing Gretchen to catch the, I think I saw Joe and Michael and Edna, so I think we have enough. Um, I will pull the board. Uh, Sean? Aye. Uh, Joe? Aye. Michael? Aye. Edna? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Lise. Aye. And I vote aye. Have I got everybody? Okay, thank you. The motion carries. Good luck with your project. Thank you all very much. Have a good thank evening. You thank you very much. Uh, the next public hearing, Marita Sturkin, 21 Corning Street, site plan review and special use permit, installation of solar panels on the roof. And who's here for Mr. Uh, can I be heard clearly? I think so. Okay, my name is Stephanie. I'm with Empire Solar. We're the company that's uh, working on this project with the homeowners. Uh, we're seeking site plan and special use approval for the installation of a 7.03 kilowatt roof mounted solar array, 19 uh, LG 370 watt panels, we had a site visit on November 5th with Edna and Joe from the planning board and Joe Kupiak, I think I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, from the conservation advisory board. Um, there were no issues noted during the meeting. 
or site visit, I'm sorry. And we did receive one letter of support from a resident in the buffer zone. Jim? Any uh, I, uh, I don't have any issues. Did want to confirm all planning board members received copies of that, um, that letter that came through with support for this project and actually the other one we're going to talk about tonight for solar. Um, no issues. I took a look at it previously and I really think the panels are generally going to be uh, kind of out of the way on the roof, given the layout. Um, so no, no new issues since last time. Um, no real comments on this. Gretchen, have we received a written report from the CAB? Yes. That was sent to everyone. Okay. Has everybody had a chance to look at the CAB report? My recollection is they saw no issues. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. correct. Okay. Um, who conducted the site visit? I think I heard Edna and Joe. Joe. Okay. Edna, would you like to start or? Sure. <clears throat> My impression was the only way anyone could see these is if they were in a hot air balloon. <laughs> and if they were in a hot air balloon, they would see two very neatly positioned uh, sets of solar panels. I saw absolutely no issues. Joe? Yeah, I would add they put the solar panels, I believe, on the eastern facing part of the roof. You can't see it unless you go all the way up Corning, which seems like a really like lightly traveled street down there. Um, I walked up and you could hardly see them from the highest point of the road. Uh, they opted not to put them on the, there's a lower so, uh, southern facing roof. They opted not to put them there. So it, they're definitely hidden and it's like a great use of where they should be. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from other planning board members? I, I just would like to add one thing. Sure, Edna. I don't think there's a need to hide solar panels on roofs, is there? <laughs> I, let me just correct what I was saying is, it, I mean, there's an issue that it's a, a historic district. So just putting solar panels in there, I think may be an issue. No, yes, no, maybe. It, it, I, I guess I would, go ahead, Jim. I was gonna say, I guess it depends on, on who's answering the question, but the reason that we look at this, the only reason we look at this is because it's in the RCO. Uh, if it were in other districts in the town, uh, we wouldn't even look at roof mounted solar, but we look at them just to make sure that we don't think it's going to create a visual impact or other impact to the historic district. But again, the, the comment of whether or not, you know, we should be hiding them or, or how they look or view, I think is a, you know, it, it varies by person, but yeah, we're, we're just looking to make sure that it's not going to create a, an issue uh, and that the neighbors don't have it because it's a historic district and in the, um, you know, Hudson River National Historic District and houses in close proximity, things like that. Well, I was going to say, and the reason for the RCO is because of the density of development in Rhinecliff. So right. I get your point, Edna, but I think there are reasons why we take a look there. And I will go back to the comprehensive plan and say these were the kinds of things that Rhinecliff wanted us to look at so that they could retain the character of their hamlet. So it's a good question, but I, I think there are reasons why it's here. But thanks for asking. Anyone else from the planning board? Okay, I see no reason to not close the public hearing. Could I have a comment? Pardon? No, I just, just see if there's anyone from the public. Okay, good. Is there anyone from the public who has a comment about this project? All right, Melody, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, then I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved, Edna. Zach and Joe. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Jim, I believe again, uh, we have an already um, made public draft approval resolution. Yes, you do, it's on the screen. Yep, anything, Jim, you wanna to point to here? No, I, I think it's a pretty standard approval, draft approval resolution. Um, again, type two. Uh, we did receive comments and letters from individuals. Planning board members received those and reviewed them. Uh, we are approving it for special use permit uh, site plan approval. 
Here I have a motion to approve the draft procedural resolution. So moved, Edna. Thank you, Edna. Second. Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Um, I'll pull the board. Edna. Aye. Kathy. Aye. Joe. Aye. Sean. Aye. Elise. Aye. Michael. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. That was great. Thank you, everyone, for reviewing this. And thank you to the board members that came out to conduct the site visit. I'm very pleased, and I'm sure the home homeowners will be as well, that everyone's in support of clean energy. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Everyone have a good night. You too. Uh, the next public hearing is Girl Next Door, LLC, Susan C, 19 Grinnell Street, Site Plan Review and Special Use Permit, again for the installation of solar panels on the roof. And we have someone here from Sun Common. Hi, Melody. It's Sam Wilo. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Sam. Great. Um, so similar... Uh, similar, similar spiel to the one right before this. Um, we're putting panels on a roof in Rhinecliff. Um, in this instance, it's going right there on the screen. It's south facing roof. Uh, that driveway is Tewksbury Lane, which is, uh, I would say, rarely traveled. And we had a site visit, and I don't believe any, anything crazy came from that. Um, it's a five kilowatt system. 14 panels on the roof and an inverter and battery on the inside of the studio there. Okay, um, Jim. I think all my questions were answered at the last meeting. I didn't uh, come up with anything new. I will just mention in the resolution, uh, I didn't have the date for this plan in there because I actually couldn't read it on the version I had, but we will add that in there, minor detail. Just make sure we get it right. Other okay. Than that, uh, Kathy and I made the site visit with someone from the CAB. Kathy, would you like to report? You know, I concur with the, with the last report about solar panels on rooftops in Rhinecliff. These are well-placed, relatively unobservable, either from the neighbor or from the street. And um, I have no issue or problems with it either on behalf of the HAPAC or in general. I would only add that, you know, as was pointed out, you know, you need to walk up, 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 up to get to this building. And it's really, I mean, even for Rhinecliff, it's very hard to see this from anywhere else on the property other than, you know, parts of the property they're owned by the applicant. So I don't think we saw any issues here. And I, I don't believe we received a written report from the CAB. Um, yes. how, oh, we did? There you did. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Uh, my recollection again is that they didn't find any issues. At least that's what they expressed when we were in the field. Um, planning board members, questions? Okay, I think everything is in order with this. Um, is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this? I'm confirming that we haven't received any letters either in support of. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone on, online here, Melody. And, and the one letter that I did see recently uh, was actually in support of both solar projects we're reviewing tonight. So we did receive that one. Okay. Uh, I think we're ready to close the public hearing. I would entertain a motion to do so. So moved, Edna. Thank you, Edna. Second? Second, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Jim, we have a resolution, I believe. We do, and again, um... You know, really quickly, it's a pretty standard resolution, uh, type two under seeker. We've reviewed all submitted uh, reports and um, 
letters. We are approving it for special use permit and site plan approval again, because it's in the RCO. Uh, again, I couldn't read the date on the plans. I will get that from Gretchen um, and put that in the resolution, but it will be the most recent plan set that we just showed you. Any questions? All right, I could have a motion to uh, accept the draft approval resolution. So second, Elise. Motion by Edna, second, Elise. I'll pull the board. Edna? Aye. Elise? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Sean? Aye. Joe? Aye. Michael? Aye. Anyone but me left? Oh, I, I'll vote aye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time, y'all. Thank you, Sam. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. All right. And the last public hearing of the evening is Sarah Baldwin and Joseph Fuller, 52 Orchard Drive, site plan review and special use permit for the, the single family dwelling. I think Warren is representing the applicant. Is Warren I here? am here. Yeah. Hi, Warren. Hello. How are you? I am well. How are you? Good, thanks. We're spending a lot of time in Rankliff tonight. We are. We are. You know, I've often commented that before too long, we'll have looked at every house in Rankliff at least once. Right. So we'll turn right, it over. So. We'll turn it over to you to present the application. Thank you. I think the the owners, applicants, um, Sarah Baldwin and Joseph Fuller may be on the uh, on the call, if not zooming with us. Um, this is a house that's a corner of Corning Street and it's called Orchard Drive. And um, it's um, sort of mid to late uh, 19th century house, quite original, quite charming. There is around the corner on Corning Street, a small garage, it used to be called a one car garage, kind of barely a one car garage, um, but it's at a higher elevation because Corning slopes uphill. and um, Joseph is a archivist and needs a, an office and there's really no room in the house to house his books uh, and give him the workspace. So the plan is to convert the garage to um, an office slash library for Joseph to work in and there'll be a, an entry, a little mudroom there. And then to connect it to the house, there's a little connector that would have some steps down um, passing um, a, a laundry area and bath and a pantry and then coming into the dining room. So um, really that's the substance of the, uh, of the proposal. There, um, there will be some window replacements, replacing some later um, um, inappropriate windows with, with uh, more original two over two windows that we have documented the house originally had. But, um, but the substance of this application is really the conversion of the garage to a workspace and then a connection to the house. Um, at the same time, the owners would like to introduce an additional parking area off of Corning Street um, so they can have more than one vehicle. And that's shown there. I met with Bob Wyant, the highway superintendent, whose only concern about this was to make sure we had adequate drainage and uh, allowed us to put an underground drain from a, uh, a catch basin in that um, gravel area down to the um, existing stormwater collection basin at the corner. Um, and uh, he was all in favor of getting cars off the street in Rycliffe. If you know, there are narrow streets and some people actually have to park on the shoulder because they don't have any parking areas. Here, at least we have the opportunity to get vehicles out of the uh, public right of way. Um, did get a comment back from the health department who said um, sort of predictably, they had no problem. We put an additional bathroom in the house, but they uh, wouldn't want to have a bathroom, meaning a bathroom generally with a tub or shower, in the uh, in the converted garage or the connector without a full um, engineering um, study and proof that the system could support it. We do know that the tank is sufficient for three bedrooms and the house only has two bedrooms, but um, you never know what the leaching pit is until you dig it up. So um, the owners are entertaining, uh, engaging a, an engineer to, to design a system to support three bedrooms, but in the meantime, we will amend our plans to simply make that a powder room and a laundry, and your um, resolution of approval can certainly reflect that, that we're not putting in or proposing to put in a full bath at this time, 
And if later we find we can do that, then we may come back for an amendment to that. But our, our plans for a building permit will not show a full bath. Um, I think those are the, uh, the salient issues and I'm happy to entertain questions from the planning board or the uh, public. All right, so let me be clear. In response to the response from the health department, you're withdrawing from your application the shower and- Tub and shower, correct. Tub right. and shower. So this would not be a full bathroom. Correct. Okay. Um, one other question I had, uh, Jim, can we go back to the image of the previous image of the exterior? Yep. Just for clarification, and, and I'll call for the site visit report later. Um, you spoke about gravel driveway. Certainly when we're mm -hmm. looking at this, it does appear to be blacktop. Can you- Yeah, it's a rendering limitation. Okay, well, I just wanted yeah. for the record for you to report what the surface treatment of the driveways would be. Yeah, the intent for, for both driveway area parking areas to be gravel, to allow whatever percolation we can get into the soil. As you know, Rhinecliff is mostly clay and rock, but um, certainly the sub base will allow some distribution of water through there rather than concentrating it uh, and, and funneling it either at the house or down the road. Okay, and, and where where approximately are you intending to put the drainage? At the uh, the lower um, gravel area, we're going to put a trench drain um, right along um, under those two windows, if you will, and that will have a, uh, a buried pipe that will lead to the storm drain at the corner. Okay. Um, Jim, any comments, especially in light of the new information? Yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you know, we did receive a, a comment or a question about the, um, I guess they call it the second driveway, the, the one in kind of the uh, the um, connector between the garage and the house, um, and about that maybe not being consistent with the designs in Rhinecliff. Um, I know we've discussed now that it was going to be stone, because it does look like, as, as Warren said, rendering issues or, or uh, limitations, but there will be stone, but I was wondering if there were options for other potential um parking area uh, elements like using some type of paver whether that be cement or a plastic paver or something keeping the grass there so that it wouldn't necessarily look like a driveway um i don't know if that's if that's much of an issue for the planning board now we know for, for a fact that it is gravel and not pavement um but it did just want to raise that i don't know warren if that's a, a consideration your clients would consider um is, is it grass now or is it is it i'm not even sure i don't remember exactly right now I think it's, it's, it's a planted area yeah uh, I mean, you're pretty confident that the gravel will help to to manage that flow, any flow that comes down to, to kind of slow it down as it approaches the house. And Yeah, the, the highway superintendent's primary concern was actually water flowing into the house, not so much right. down the road. Obviously, right. we're concerned about that, too. Um, we're going to want to make sure that water does not flow into the house, even though that area will have a crawl space. Um, it doesn't need to be any wetter than Rhinecliff basements uh, typically are. So that's why a drain uh, will certainly be um, inserted there and a um, actually berm it up a little bit. So, so there's kind of a, a trench, a natural trench or swale, if you will, and a drain to intercept any water and take it down to the storm system. Right, so, so it won't be pavement. Um, you know, it seems like storm water will be handled. I guess it's just a question whether or not the planning board is okay with the, you know, stone as the design or if you'd want to consider something else. And we did get a comment related to that. Uh, and then I guess my only other comment is, you know, how we move forward with, the, the, I mean, we can certainly put something in the resolution that the plans are going to be modified. I don't think that's a big issue, but the health department um, question about, you know, potential changes, we're usually um, pretty, um, we usually hold off on things, I guess, until we're confident that the health department's okay with kind of what's going on on, on smaller lots. So I would kind of put that out there to see where, where how we feel things are going with that. Um, since there is a potential change. Okay. Would it, sorry. I, I was I was going to next move to the report from the people who made the site visit, and that would be you, Kathy. So. And you. Um, I realize. Yeah. Um, by the way, I concur. I think with what Jim was just saying that um, with the new information and the new. Um, health department input maybe we ought to wait 
at least one more meeting. I found, or we found the design for the connector and for the um, adaptation of the garage uh, appropriate for both the house and for Ryan Cliff in terms of historic architecture there. So I think, I think not to put words in her mouth, Mel and I both felt the same way about it. Um, I think the driveway issue union does require maybe a little bit more input and more um, uh, discussion with regard to what the health department is asking for. I would concur that we, you know, with this application, we're looking at sort of two different issues. I, I don't think Kathy and I in the field, I, I think the addition is sensitively done. I think it reads in the field well with the historic house. It certainly from the front of the house does not detract from it at all. Um, they've paid special attention to, you know, window selection and other things. I think it's unfortunate you know, the rendering of the driveways because it, it does sort of suggest this mass of blacktop that I understand isn't going to be there, but it's sort of hard to read. And um, so, you know, I think it, it certainly calls out for some sort of softening of that. Um, and I know we ask about landscaping and would there be landscaping? And Warren, if I remember correctly, that hadn't yet been determined. Is that correct? Well, there, there will be landscaping uh, on the sides of the, the parking right. areas and down. Right now, there's a white picket fence that runs down the road and right. um, substantial landscaping and everything will be retained. It can be, and I'm sure some will be supplemented by the new owners. But um, Right, but, yeah. but as it is right now, looking at this, it's hard mm -hmm. to, you know, it's hard to visualize that. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate the, the offer. Uh, to remove the tub and shower, but I'm really not sure how we sit with that, Jim, in terms of waiting for the health department or not. So I'd ask for opinions and comments from other members of the planning board. Well, first, I have a couple of other comments. Sure, uh, go ahead. At the last meeting, we noted that the attic is finished. And there was some comment about the stairway being improved to make it more accessible. I had asked that a photo be provided of the attic and that was agreed to be done. So do we have that to look at? I have photos, Edna. I'm not sure if I sent them to the town, I could do that. I did specifically take them for that purpose. So. Okay. The other question that I had also would be I don't know, I kind of like to see the floor plan of the attic along with these other floor plans. It, it's on the drawing there, Ed, and it's on the Is upper it? left. Yep. Okay. That's the floor plan. Thank you. That's it, sort of elevation, right? Um, could we go back to the uh, exterior rendering? The, I'm wondering if there is room near the house, at least this upper parking lot, if between the parking lot and the house, there could be some landscaping. I think that was the we asked him, Warren spoke earlier about um, his expectation that the owners would be landscaping the property, but I don't believe we have details. Okay, but even without details right now, we showed the driveway going right up to the house. So, you know, I would like to see that there's three feet or whatever whatever minimum uh space you need to do some plantings okay you know and that that allows enough room then for it to be a parking place do you refer to the adapted garage or to the house itself or both I, i'm looking at the at the garage the upper parking area right that's not the house Right. Well, it's going to be part of the house, right? Right, but... Okay. When we were there, we saw some pretty significant vegetation, and we did ask about landscaping, which, as Warren has pointed out, he's going to... They'll be continuing to work on a plan for landscaping. 
Well, but my recollection was, and correct me if I'm wrong, Warren, that in order to construct the uh, hyphen between the main house and the garage, the landscaping that's currently there is going to have to be removed. Yes, there's got to be a retaining wall, which isn't there right now. There's a, there's a tree and a rather abrupt drop off. Um, the tree is not in great condition and um, would interfere with the retaining wall. But um, is certainly, again, there'd be planting in the areas that are shown as sort of grass in this rendering. Um, right now, there's a, a driveway that runs right up to a garage door, and I think there's very limited room in front of the converted garage uh, if we want to park a car there to put a planting strip. I suppose one could put pots seasonally with things in them or possibly grow um, a vine up a wall on a trellis, but uh, there's certainly not room for a large planting bed between the converted garage and the parking area if the goal is to park a car off the road. Well, something, anything would soften. Okay. Trellis sound like a good idea. So I, I just have two questions. And uh, I, I, just for education purposes on my side, as only being on the board for about a year now, what, what is the picture of the stairs going upstairs going to provide for us? What? She's uh, asking for a picture of the stairs going to the attic. I, I don't no, understand. I, I asked for a picture of the attic space, which is finished. OK. It's essentially another room. I would like to see it. OK. I, I thought you asked for a picture of the stairs. My, my no, fault. Sorry, I perhaps wasn't clear. And I guess my second point is, is I just want to understand what the planning board has um, with landscaping, right? Because I can plant a tree in my yard tomorrow, essentially, to some degree. Like, what, what is our position on landscaping? I understand with new plans, softening of the front of the house and stuff like that, but what kind of, we can make suggestions, that's correct? Is there, can someone just fill me in on that just for, again, for my own purposes? Well, we, if we had something along with this application suggesting what the landscaping would be, we would make comments. I think what I'm hearing is people are suggesting that landscaping would soften this, and we'd like to know more about what that might be. There is currently quite a bit of landscaping around this side of the house. Um, and I think also it goes to the point of the driveways um, as to how do you um, reduce the visual impact of those in a very small and tight community. I, I'm, I'm only giving my impression. Others can give theirs as well. Jim, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, so I just put up the, um, the Google image just so everyone can see. This is the right property, right, Warren? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, I just like to clarify, make sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, so when, when a project comes in, yes, I mean, Sean, you can put a house, you know, a house, you can put a tree or any plantings in, you know, on your property, you know, generally as you see fit. But when we do look at these, particularly when we've got a special use permit, special use permits in particular provide a higher level of review, uh, and we are in the RCO overlay. So, uh, you know, when a project comes in, we do like to see any landscaping that's proposed, just like we like to see the lighting that goes on the house to make sure that, you know, it's consistent with what um, you know, it was generally looked at for the co in the code in the comprehensive plan compatible with the neighborhood, things like that. I mean, generally speaking, um, you know, landscaping is pretty straightforward as long as you're not putting in an invasive species or something, obviously, you know, awful. Um, it's not really an issue, but it does help soften things. Um, and that's very often what we look for, particularly in, you know, in, in places like Ryan Cliff. And um, Joe, you know, it's something, it was Joe, right? No, it was Sean. Sean. Sorry, Sean. Um, it, it's something that the preservation committee is also looking at philosophically, and that is landscape, landscape design, landscape architecture, and looking to include somebody on our committee who can speak to some of these issues, um, in particularly in historic districts where um, landscape design, landscape architecture, plannings, and so forth are very important. So thank you for bringing it up. I think I think in, in Ryan Cliff in particular, Sean, it also goes to the uh, character defining features of the neighborhood. Um, and because it's so densely populated, um, some things can make 
sometimes little things can make a significant visual impact. So, uh, you know, I don't know that you can use the same comments to apply everywhere, but I, I think some of it goes to the, you know, uh, the way Rhinecliffe has developed and the way it looks. I think. Uh... If, Sorry, if you guys. take a look at what the zoning law has to say uh, about how the planning board should look at site plans, there is a real emphasis on landscaping. The, the planning board is directed to review landscaping. And so it certainly has an interest in it when it comes to site plan review and, and the authority. Does that answer? The question about what the planning board's role is? I think everyone answered my question very thoughtfully. <laughs> so I feel like I just went back to college. Thank you. <laughs> well, good. And you get an A. All right. Um, anyone else from the planning board? Okay. Um, I would, uh, Jim, is there anyone from the public? I know we received one letter. Is there anyone here from the public who wishes to comment? Not seeing anyone, Melody. Um, perhaps because of the conversation, Jim, you have the letter we received. Uh, my recollection is it went to sort of the character of the neighborhood and the major issue that was raised was the introduction of two driveways. Is that a fair summary of the letter? Warren, I assume you yeah. saw it as well. Yes, yes, it, yeah. it is, but it was on the, sec the second driveway, kind of the, the one to the right we're showing on here. Not two right. per se, just kind of the, the second one. Right. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to make sure that both Warren and you agree that that is the substance of the letter we received. Yes. Okay, um, okay. so uh, where do we want to go here? We have uh, We have sort of an issue with the health department and bathrooms, and we have an issue with driveways and we have an issue with landscaping. So um, Warren, uh, is this something that you would like us to continue the public hearing so you have time to address those or? We, we can certainly address the, um, I can get uh, the pictures of the attic uh, sent to you. Um, I have them, I can um, you discuss with the clients the addition of some landscaping and plant material, specific, their, their specific references. Those could be added to the uh, the drawings along with changing the uh, texture and appearance of the parking area so it doesn't look like asphalt. I don't know that we're going to get a speedy resolution from the health department. Um, basically, the letter from David Pierce kicked it back to the town in terms of the zoning officer of the building department um, and, and said, it, it, which is what they often do is kind of up to you. So normally, if we don't have a, a tub or a shower, it's a it's a half bath and it's a laundry. There's no restriction on putting a laundry in a house, um, and there is no ground floor bath or half bath at all. So um, if your position is that you don't even want a half bath without something from the health department, um, that's a novel position. But I can certainly get uh, we're, we're going to get an engineer involved and. Um, see what we can determine about the existing septic system beyond the tank and whether the uh, leaching pit is sufficient to support three bedrooms or whether we need to add another one. But that may not happen in uh, a matter of, um, you know, 30 days. Warren, you said they kicked it back to, Dave kicked it back to the town, to the zoning administrator? He, he, he said, what? He said the, the definition of the bathroom basically was up to the town is the way he, the letter read. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's not a bathroom, I'm paraphrasing, I don't know. Right. No. But essentially, in, in his opinion, if it wasn't a bathroom, it wouldn't. Yeah. Maybe I'm yeah. paraphrasing. Wouldn't be an issue in in his mind. Well, he, right. he wasn't really saying what it would be in their mind. He said it was up up to the town how the town would interpret it, basically. Okay. Or that, um, that's what it was going to be. Yeah. Michael, I we haven't heard from you, and I know you've been recently serving in that position. Would you care to comment? My indentured servitude is over. <laughs> I realize that. I uh, I did not receive have not received anything from Dave Pearson on this. I, I know that Warren. I saw the email that you sent, and I know that you know you're asking the health department what they thought, and you know what what, what steps they you thought they should take. Uh, I don't know that Dave copied because I didn't see anything as of Friday. I did not see anything from the health department referencing this project, so I I don't know what to say. I, I'm technically. The town does not have a sanitary uh, 
ordinance. We depend upon the health department. So, you know, Dave may kick it back to us, but um, I, I think from what Warren has said, traditionally, maybe we've looked at a, a, a powder room, a half bath differently than a bathroom. I don't think we can say that we've done that on the basis of any legal obligation or regulations in the town because we don't have any for that. We depend upon the health department for that. So, um, I, you know, I, if we want to go with a regulated response, we probably have to wait for the health department since they're the only ones with the regulations that govern uh, water and, and septic in, in the town of Rhinebeck. Yeah, so interestingly, the issue isn't isn't the addition of a bathroom per se, because he, as David said in his letter, and I'll report it to you, Mike, we said he sent it to the building department and the zoning department. He said that you could add a bathroom in the first floor of the house and they would have no concerns whatsoever. Um, but by adding it in, in the converted garage or the addition, then it raises the question is, is the office a bedroom, which is where we started this discussion the last time we had a meeting. The office obviously is not intended by this owner to be a bedroom, but somebody someday could use it as a bedroom in the presence of a full bath or a bath with a shower a few steps away would sort of heighten the, the possibility, I would say, of that happening. Without that, anyone using the office as a guest room would have to trudge through the rest of the house, go upstairs and use a single bathroom in the house up there. And that's considered less likely and that therefore would suggest that the office would not be considered a bedroom. So these two things are always intertwined, bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, but the fact that a bathroom within the house, if we were to convert the living room or dining room to a bathroom, the health department says they take no position with that. But it's, if we put it in anything we add to the house, suddenly it's uh, another matter. Yep. Warren, putting it in that context, though, that, that's, that's the right context. That helps because the issue, like you say, is, is the bedroom. And the definition of what is a bedroom or could be a bedroom was changed by the town in the code last year. So, you know, that being the, you know, kind of part of what we discuss is whether or not it goes to um, the county or not, you know, it's left that, that is specifically left to the discretion of the planning board. So as you said, if, if it's not a full bathroom, do we then consider this to be, um, you know, a, a bedroom for the purposes of, of what we're looking at here, the bedroom and bathroom could be a, a habitable unit, I guess. Um, and, that, and that is to the discretion of the planning board, but, but also whether or not you're comfortable, you know, the planning board's comfortable with whatever we do have or haven't heard from the county. Um, Right. Well, I think, Sorry, go man. ahead. Was that so Delise? Just a question, how many bedrooms is the existing house and how big is the current septic in relationship to how many bedrooms? There, there are two bedrooms on the second floor of the house and one bathroom and the septic tank, which was pumped when the new owners purchased the property or prior to it is sufficient for three bedrooms. So then wouldn't it be slightly less concerning if the septic is, can support it? I don't believe we have all the information though, do we on the, I mean, my recollection was we don't really know what's there. Is that correct? Well, the septic tank is known because that was pumped right. and the size was determined. What we don't know is, um, you know, how large the leaching pit is that the right. septic tank empties into. And generally you don't know that unless it was done recently right. enough to have a record or you dig it up. Um, and that, that's certainly done. If it, if it fails, you do dig it up and you end up putting in a new one. So it can be dug up and, and maybe that can happen in the next um, 30 days and we can come back with uh, an assessment of whether the, the leaching pit has adequate capacity for the three bedrooms also. Um, anyone else? I think it's important to, to keep in mind that when septic systems fail, it's usually not the tank. The tank itself is a sort of a transfer station, as it were. It's right. the, uh, leaching whatever device, whatever facility is being used, uh, cesspools, leach lines, uh, ditches, all sorts of you know different possibilities, uh, constructed wetlands, things of that sort. So that's, that's why it becomes important and more difficult to determine the actual capacity of a system to function properly is what's most difficult to get a get a view of to find out exactly what exists. Right. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here and were we only talking about this? Um, maybe we'd continue the conversation a little longer, but if, but as it stands, I think we have we have a request from um, Edna to see some information about the attic we have. Um, some questions outstanding about what the treatment of the driveway might be, um, better information about that. And we have outstanding questions about how 
landscaping can be integrated into the plan to soften um, soften the entire environment of the house. So it seems to me that there's sufficient number of outstanding questions to continue the public hearing. And that gives Warren time to speak with the applicants to decide whether their desire is to remove the tub and shower or to go ahead and get things assessed in terms of the, of the fields associated with the septic. Does that does that seem like a reasonable summary? Uh, yeah, I would just add that we are rightfully concerned about things like solar on rooftops in Rhinecliff because it is so densely populated. I would think maybe the most important thing we would want to be sure about is septic systems in Rhinecliff. Thank you, Edna. Any other opinions? Jim, does that seem like a reasonable approach to you? Oh, yeah, to me, yeah. Warren, how about you? That's fine, sure. Anyone else from the planning board? Anything we're missing here that we wanna uh, point out to Warren so that you know when he comes back, we've got everything covered that might be of concern to us. Um, can I, this is, I'm the, I'm Sarah Baldwin here. My, I'm here with my husband. Yes, Sarah. And, nice to meet you. Hi. Um, I, I can't get video going or I would be showing us here. Um, the house, uh, first of all, okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. I'm here with my husband and my mother. My mother lives next door. The, the front of the house has, um, significant landscaping and I am a master gardener uh, that is trained in that um, program in in New Mexico granted where I where I've been living but I have fully intend to keep the landscaping looking beautiful the landscaping at the side of the house is fairly insignificant it's a north facing side it doesn't get a lot of light and so it doesn't it's sort of weedy looking to me, and I hate to destroy anything beautiful um, that's flowering and that's growing, but this to me doesn't feel like much of a loss uh, because the front of the house has so much beautiful landscaping, which I intend to keep up and improve in my own way. Uh, that's, just, that's just my one little bit. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I, I think the inclination is to continue the public hearing. Um, unless I hear otherwise, I would entertain a motion to do so. So moved, Edna. Uh, could I have a second? Second, Elise. And uh, Gretchen, we would be continuing the public hearing until when? December 20th at 645. December 20, 645, at which point we'll be looking for additional, looking for photo, driveway information, and any, any proposed landscaping details, um, and any updates on the, on the septic system. Um, all right, um, anything else? Um, just to add to that, Mel, just the Warren said he, he may update the plan, so depending on where they go, uh, just yes. revising the plans to take out the tub and that type of thing, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, I mean, as long as we're taking the month, if you and your applicant decide that's what you're gonna yep. do, certainly would be good to see that in the plan itself. So there's no question about where we're going. Right, exactly, thanks. Okay, um, I have a motion, I have a second. All those in favor of continuing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Warren, thank you. Sure. Uh, Baldwin and Fuller family. We'll see you in a month. Um, and uh, I think the next thing on the agenda is adjournment. So, so, moved. <laughs> so moved by Michael, second. Edna. Thank you, Edna. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions?
Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Good night. For everybody. Good night.